Hey out there legal warriors, have you ever wondered what are the different types of hearings in a criminal case? They're very confusing. There's at least four, five, maybe even six different types of hearings that can happen in a criminal case in Washington State. So I'm gonna to try to explain those all. So if you're interested in this type of the law, if you have a criminal case, stay tuned because this is the video for you. My name is attorney Lance Fryer. I'm a defense attorney in Linwood, Washington. My law firm has been defending people charged with crimes all throughout Washington State for more than 20 years. And I'm putting out these videos to help educate the public. So if you find this useful, please like and please subscribe. More people will get the help they need. I'm just going to jump right into it. All these different types of hearings that can happen in a criminal case. You might have a, a court notice that says you have a certain type of hearing or you might have heard from the court or a police officer or somebody, hey, you have this type of hearing coming up. So what are the types of hearings? What happens with those? And what are the expectations on you or a defendant, uh, anyone in that position, if you have a criminal case you're dealing with? Well, let's start with an arrest. If somebody gets arrested, the first possible type of hearing that could happen is called a first appearance. And those are only going to happen in, in either felony cases or in cases where the police officer doesn't have the right to charge someone directly. They can arrest them but not charge them. So think about a county sheriff or a state patrol person, a state case versus a city case. And at a first appearance, that usually means that the person's in jail and a judge is going to review the paperwork and determine should I release the person who has been accused of a crime without having to post bail or should I make them post some bail or some money uh, basically to guarantee they come back. They can also set conditions like don't go home in a domestic violence case and no contact order, stuff like that. So for the most part, that's what happens at a first appearance. If uh, there's a first appearance, oftentimes there's a second hearing called a second appearance and something similar happens there. They don't set bail, things like that, but they're going to let you know, hey, have we charged you right away or are we going to take more time to charge? So those things really just apply to people in jail. What if you're not in jail? Well, what really starts a criminal case is called an arraignment. So think about the actual start of someone being charged with a crime as an arraignment hearing. And an arraignment hearing is when uh, you are brought, you go to the court or you're brought before the court and they inform the defendant of the nature of the charges against them. Hey, Miss Defendant, you are charged with theft in the third degree. The maximum penalty is a $5,000 fine and one year in jail. Uh, how do you plead to that? So that's what happens. They inform you of the nature of the charges against you, what the maximum is, what any mandatory minimums are, what any collateral consequences might be in some cases, such as a loss of firearm rights on a domestic violence case if you're convicted, and then the defendant is expected to enter a plea. And even if the defendant is guilty, the court expects a plea of not guilty because most courts aren't set to take guilty pleas at arraignment and also because it's important that uh, a person's rights are defended because the state or the prosecutor usually uh, can put someone in jail. So we want to make sure a professional, a defense attorney is able to help out. So that an arraignment is not to talk about what happened uh, during uh, the supposed crime. The judge makes an assumption that if everything in the probable cause statement is true, they sort of assume it's true, and then they determine if that's true, is that a crime? So if the probable cause statement just said, hey, uh, Miss Defendant was jaywalking, well, in most areas, including Washington State, that wouldn't be a crime, so the, so the court wouldn't find probable cause. If it says Miss Defendant uh, took something from Target, uh, even if the defendant doesn't say that she did, um, then uh, the court will say, well, if this is true, that would be a crime, so I'm going to set certain conditions on you, defendant. And the conditions could be post bail to stay out of jail if you had a really bad record. But in that type of example, taking something from Target, the conditions might be uh, stay in contact with your attorney or get an attorney, don't have any new crimes while this case is going on, um, uh, basically uh, keep the court updated of your address during this whole thing and finally probably don't go to any target stores is probably what the court would order in that hypothetical example in a dui it might be don't drive without uh, a license and insurance 
in a DUI, they might order uh, a defendant to uh, install an ignition interlock device in their car, but it's that type of stuff. It's not to determine what happened though. So the requirements on the defendant there are just basically to, to sit there and say not guilty or let the attorney that's handling it do that. So then we have a different type of hearing that happens after that. This is the, about the third or fourth hearing I'm talking about. It's called a pretrial hearing if we're at the misdemeanor type of case, non-felonies. And at felonies, they have some different type of things that are similar. They might call it a case scheduling hearing or an omnibus hearing. A little bit of difference, but it's the same idea. So I'm just gonna call it a pretrial hearing. At a pretrial hearing, it basically, for the most part, requires the defendant to appear at the hearing, either in person or virtually. There's some exceptions now during all the, the COVID, post-COVID stuff. Um, and it requires the prosecutor and the defense attorney to be present as well. And it's basically a check-in type hearing. The defendant is not expected to talk. The defendant doesn't need to talk about the case, nor should they. Um, but basically the court is going to uh, call the case and then the prosecutor and the defense are sort of going to explain um, what is the next step in the case. Do we need a continuance to have further negotiation and research and looking at the evidence? or are we ready to resolve the case, some type of disposition, a dismissal or a plea or an entry of some type of other type of uh, resolution of the case? Or do we need to confirm the case for a jury trial or a judge trial? Hey, we can't settle it, we want a trial date. Or finally, do we want to set it for legal motions? Do we want to fight about what evidence comes in, about whether or not admissions from the uh, defendant come into evidence or not, that type of thing. So a pretrial hearing is sort of a check-in date. It's very informal, believe it or not. There's not a lot said at those hearings and the defendant at most usually needs to say they understand what's going on or they understand that they need to waive speedy trial rights uh, so their attorney can get more time if it's a continuance. The most common outcome of a pretrial hearing is another pretrial hearing. Uh, the reason why the pretrial hearings really exist is to force the parties to acknowledge a case exists and move it towards resolution or move it towards a trial. And how many pretrials are allowed? Well, it depends on each court, but for the most part, you can get three, four, six pretrials. It depends where you're at and what the reasons are that a case needs to be continued because there's lots of things that happen during a case. So besides a pretrial hearing, uh, another type of hearing that could happen, which I just mentioned, is a motions hearing. A motions hearing is a lot more involved. It may involve testimony of law enforcement or it may only be legal argument. An example in a DUI type case might be the defense bringing a motion to dismiss the case because the allegations by the defense are is that the officer made an illegal stop on the vehicle or an illegal arrest. And you can see that in DUI cases, especially with state patrol cases where they have a video uh, camera in their car. And maybe the state trooper is saying that I pulled this car over for weaving, but when your defense attorney gets the video, it doesn't show any weaving. And if that uh, there was no weaving uh, that was illegal or at least or enough to cause a stop, uh, then the defense may be able to argue a motion that if it's an illegal stop, illegal government action, that the whole case should be thrown out. And that actually requires testimony. And so in that case, it's gonna be set on a special hearing. Uh, your attorney may file legal arguments. And then most likely you're gonna see the law enforcement officers show up and have to be testify in front of the judge. And you as the defendant probably aren't going to say anything. Your attorney could call you to testify, but typically that's a bad idea. And But you're going to you know, go through an hour, maybe two hour hearing at these motion hearings where the judge can rule, hey, is the evidence uh, legally obtained by the government or was it illegal? And if it was illegal, then it should get thrown out under something called... Um, the fruit of the poisonous tree, that and anything after it gets thrown out. So if the stop was illegal, everything after that is probably illegal also. There's all types of motion hearings. Some don't require testimony. Um, there could be motion hearings about uh, um, whether or not the case was filed on time. Well, you know, was it filed soon enough? Was, did the delay prejudice the defendant? There's some complicated due process things that can be argued, but a motion hearing is more involved, but still, most of the time you as a defendant or any defendant out there um, probably 
will not need to be too involved in testimony. Um, another uh, type of hearing then that could come up um, is some type of disposition hearing or a resolution. And in that one, the defendant is going to be more involved. Um, those pretrial hearings that I talked about, some courts are set up to take resolutions on pretrial hearing, but some courts don't like to do that because they're so backed up with cases, right? And the, a resolution hearing takes a lot longer than I need a continuance, right, at a pretrial. There's going over resolution paperwork, arguments on each side about sentencing, if there's going to be a guilty finding, stuff like that. So if it gets set for a disposition or resolution calendar, it's called different things in different places, then you're probably going to need to be much more involved as a defendant. Um, your attorney is going to went over with you what to expect, hopefully what to say, what not to say, to try to get the best result from the court. Again, the whole point of uh, trying to get uh, uh, you know, to deal with a case is to get the best possible outcome, right? So you may have to say some things that you don't really uh, want to say, but we need to have you say the right things to try to get the right result from the court and everybody involved. Um, I think the final type of hearing I want to cover uh, um, would be a trial. And there's two types of trials available in Washington State. There's a jury trial and a bench trial. And a bench trial would be a trial where the judge decides guilt or innocence, just this one person. And there's reasons why you might wanna have a bench trial. If it's a very emotional case, if uh, it's a type of thing that's complicated and your attorney thinks the jury's not gonna understand the complicated legal issues and if they're understood, they go in your favor, that would be a good reason to have a judge trial. Um, but most of the time, you're gonna to wanna to have a jury trial if it gets to a trial. A jury trial, um, and we have a video on what happens if, if you take your case to trial and how a jury trial works, that's a whole other subject. Um, but a jury trial basically is a, a day long or a week long or multiple week long event, depending on how complicated and serious the case is, where a jury gets to hear all the evidence just like you see on TV, right? And uh, in that case, you're gonna have to be very involved, right? You may choose to testify most of the time Defendants don't testify, um, and there's good reasons for that, but uh, you may have to testify. So if you're gonna have to be very involved if it gets to a jury trial. So the types of hearings, first appearances and second appearances, that's usually, usually in custody and before you're charged. Once you get charged, if that happens, unfortunately, we've got an arraignment, we've got pretrial hearings, we've got motions hearings, and then usually either a disposition hearing or a trial. There's a few others out there like motions to quash warrants, stuff like that, but those are the most common ones that you're going to find in a criminal case in Washington State. So I hope you found this useful and it's cleared it up a bit if you've ever wondered about this or in this situation. If you find this useful, please like and please subscribe. More people will get to see it. And then really, if you're in a situation where you need help from a criminal lawyer, feel free to give my office a call. My law firm's been defending people charged with crimes all throughout Washington State for more than 20 years. We'll listen to what happened we'll identify a way forward and we will be there for you. Thank you.